Dear participants, I welcome you to our presentation on monitoring water quality through tracking and crowdsourcing. My name is Maggie Hieber-Ruiz. I'm a biologist with focus on limnology and technical cooperation with developing countries. After working for several years in El Salvador, I am now working at the Institute for Environmental Sciences at the University Koblenz Landau in Germany. This presentation on chemical substances and environmental contamination is the first part of three consecutive presentations on monitoring water quality through low cost tracking and crowdsourcing. In this first part, I will give you a short introduction on chemical substances and environmental contamination with a focus on the situation in El Salvador and Central America. Where can you find chemical substances and what are some consequent effects on public health? How do rules and regulations make allowance for this situation? And how is the reality outside in the rural area, again focusing on El Salvador? What are chemical substances? This is a very broad term, including solids, liquids and gases. Chemical substances can be grouped based on their characteristic properties, as for example radionuclides, heavy metals, nanoparticles, acids, polyaromatic hydrocarbons or persistent organic pollutants. They often also are classified based on their application or origin, as for example drugs, pharmaceuticals, pesticides, nutrients, mycotoxins or gases. Chemicals can be of natural origin, artificially be produced or in many cases as well as. One important characteristic of all of them is that depending on their concentration, they can have negative and even toxic effects on the environment and public health. If we focus on just one substance, for example the heavy metal mercury, we can find it almost all over the world, in elevated up to very high concentrations. There remain only very few pristine areas without mercury contamination, such as the Amazon basin, parts of the Canadian and Eurasian tundra and taiga, and some Indonesian islands. A similar occurrence pattern can be found for pesticides. Also not as widely distributed as mercury, pesticides still can be found in all parts of the world, with the highest concentrations related to areas with intensive agricultural activities, such as in the United States of America, Europe and southern Argentina. I want to look a little closer on pesticides. In the USA exist today more than 20,000 different registered pesticide products. It is estimated that in the whole world over 5.2 billion pounds of pesticides are used every year which result in expenditures of almost 40 billion US dollars annually. This is more than the gross domestic product of many African and Central American countries. And it is expected that the usage of pesticides will increase tenfold till 2019 to over 52 billion pounds per year. Regarding public health within workers in agriculture, it is estimated that roughly 25 million people suffer from pesticide poisoning every year, of which about 300,000 die every year, primarily in developing countries. The Blacksmith Institute documents in its yearly report over 600 of the world's worst polluted places. In the recent 2011 report, the top 10 toxic pollution problems are heavy metals such as mercury, lead and chromium, arsenic and pesticides. Also distribution patterns of mercury and pesticides showed highest concentration 
in the USA and Europe, the worst polluted places can be found mainly in southern regions such as Latin America, Africa and Southeast Asia. Let us now focus on the situation of one of the strongly impacted countries, El Salvador and Central America. Although the Blacksmith Institute defines the world's worst polluted places, often no or little specific information and data exist. These are some results of the water quality of the largest lake in El Salvador, the reservoir Cerro Grande, analyzed in rainy season, which is represented by the blue squares, and in dry season, represented by the green triangles. Despite its status as a protected Ramsar site, you can find highly elevated concentrations of various toxic chemical substances, such as for example the pesticide dieldrin, cyanides, or the heavy metals copper, cadmium, mercury and aluminum. Related to international regulations of the European Union, and the US Environmental Protection Agency, the analyzed concentrations frequently exceeded the quality standards and criteria continuous concentrations. We can find similar res results looking at the biological quality of the rivers of El Salvador. This map combines the results from four different years, 2006 to 2010, shown in the single circles, starting with the oldest data from 2006 in the center and ending with the most recent data from 2010. Water quality is illustrated in five different classes, from dark blue representing excellent water quality, to light blue for good, gray for medium, yellow for bad and red for worst water quality. Without going into details, you can't find any dark blue and only very few light blue spots, but predominantly gray, yellow and red spots, representing the medium to worst water quality. Looking at the temporal pattern, water quality sometimes stays stable, but mainly changes for the worse. This shows that there definitely is a need to monitor water quality. But how is water quality monitored in El Salvador and in most other developing countries? In El Salvador, the biological quality is calculated via the so-called ICA, the Index of Water Quality, or Indice de Calidad de Agua in Spanish. If you look at the parameters taken into account, then you can find dissolved oxygen, fecal coliforms, pH, dissolved oxygen demand, nitrates, phosphates, temperature, turbidity and total dissolved solids. But you won't find any of the before mentioned toxic substances, such as heavy metals or pesticides. As also these parameters are crucial, most rules and regulations nowadays have taken them into account. Looking at the directive of the European Parliament on environmental quality standards in the field of water policy, then you can find in Annex 1 a list of environmental quality standards for priority substances and certain other pollutants, including heavy metals, pesticides, poly polyaromatic hydrocarbons and many others. Also, El Salvador still doesn't have regulations for surface water quality. They already included toxic substances in their requirements for drinking water quality. Maximal allowed limits, as well as frequency and parameters for monitoring of water quality, as shown in this table. The regulation differentiates between minimal, normal and complete analysis each with a different set of parameters and frequency of analysis. 
We have seen that the rules and regulations do make allowance for the different toxic substances exposed in the into, into the environment. But how is the reality outside in rural areas? In El Salvador exist different sources of drinking water supply. Under the Central State Agency for Water Supply and Sanitation primarily serves the bigger cities. Associated with ANDA exist some few decentralized drinking water suppliers in the urban area. However, in rural areas, the major part of the drinking water is distributed and administered by small, decentralized, community-based systems. And still 27% of rural households get their water from natural sources like springs, private wells or lakes without any treatment or control. This graph shows the relative proportion of the different drinking water sources in urban and rural areas of El Salvador. You can see the dominance of decentralized community-based systems in rural areas. But again, how is the reality? This is an offer from El Salvadorian laboratory accredited based on ISO 17025 for analysis of water samples according to the Salvadorian rule for drinking water that we've seen before. The minimal analysis costs 45 US dollar, the normal 415 and the complete analysis more than 500 US dollars. Following the regulations, a drinking water supplier has to realize one complete analysis plus five normal, plus six minimal analysis per year, sum, summing up to a total of 2,852 US dollar every year. These sums are impossible to raise for the generally poor rural areas. Coming back to our initial questions, we can summarize that humans and the environment are exposed to a constantly growing number of chemical substances. Rules and regulations do make allowance for this situation and require the regular monitoring of a large number of these parameters. However, in developing countries, drinking water as well as sanitation systems are often decentralized and community organized, especially in rural areas. Comprehensive monitoring of water quality is very expensive and ambitious and therefore there is a large need for low-cost alternatives.